Again, thank you for joining us today for this AgriBility webinar. My name is Paul Jones. I'm the manager of the National AgriBility Project, which is located at Purdue University. And our topic today is on State Assistive Technology Act programs. And especially, we're going to talk about the relationship of those programs with AgriBility projects. We have three presenters today, Marty Exline, who's at the AT3 Center, Tammy Coger at the North Carolina Assistive Technology Program, and Beatrice Rodriguez, who is with the North Carolina AgriBility Partnership Project. Before we start with our actual presentation, I have just a few basic webinar instructions for you. Hopefully your audio is working sufficiently. If you have any issues, uh, you can go to the Communicate menu, which you should find in the top left of your screen. You can look at your audio connections there and also make some adjustments in terms of your volume and, um, and other things there. If you need closed captioning, those are available through the Media Viewer, and that's on the right-hand section of your screen. Um, you can contract any of the options on your right-hand column, uh, the participants, um, the media viewer, and anything else that might appear there. You can also expand or contract that entire column by clicking and dragging on the border of it between uh, the border of between it and the presentation window. If you have questions about the presentation, you have two options. You can um, enter those into the chat, which is on the right-hand column also. Make sure you send any questions about the presenter, uh, pr presentation to all panelists, and also hit your return so that uh, we can see those. In addition, if you have questions and would like to ask those verbally, we'll have a question and answer period at the end. And uh, you can click on a raise hand icon that should be near your name. And we will do our best to activate your microphone or telephone connection so that you can ask your question verbally. A couple other requests. If you have more than one person who is viewing at your computer, we would appreciate knowing that so we can have an accurate uh, assessment of our attendance. We will have four quick poll questions after the presentation and before the question and answer period. We'd appreciate your feedback about the webinar during that time. We are recording this session, and it will be archived on the agribility.org website under online training. If you have any technical problems, we ask that you would try using the chat window first. If that doesn't work for you, please send an email to me, jonesp at purdue.edu, which is the email uh, from which you should have gotten your uh, instructions today. So you can simply reply to that with any technical issues. Some of you may not be familiar with AgriBility. We are a program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And we focus specifically on issues of disability among farmers, ranchers, and other agricultural workers. Every, land, every AgriBility project is a, a partnership between a land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization. There are currently 20 funded state projects around the country. And there's one national AgriBility project, again, that's led through Purdue University's Breaking New Ground Resource Center. And our current partners on the national AgriBility project include Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, April, which is the Association of Programs for Rural Independent Living, Colorado State University, and Washington State University. If you'd like more information about AgriBility, including uh, we have approximately 70 other archived webinars, you have you uh, please go to the agribility.org website and uh, check out the information there. You can also find contact information for all the state projects there. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to Marty Exline, who's going to be giving the beginning of our uh, presentation. And then we'll move on from there. And so I will mute my camera and audio and uh, return to you for the poll questions after the presentation.
There we go. Thanks a lot, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, Tammy and Betty and I really uh, appreciate the chance to um, to talk about a little bit about the assistive technology programs and some of the collaborations that they have with the, the state um, agribility program. Um, Sorry about that. Um, so each each state has uh, a state assistive technology program. Every state and territory through the Assistive Technology Act. There are 56 altogether, um, and each one is charged with uh, serving their entire state's population um, geographically, uh, type of disability, um, any age group. So whether it's infants, toddlers. Uh, children in school, adults, um, or senior citizens, persons who are aging, um, they all are eligible to receive uh, assistive technology services because of a disability. Um, and in every setting, uh, the state AT programs uh, provide services, whether it is in education, um, elementary or secondary school, right up on through colleges or universities or, or trainings, employment, um, whether somebody might be trying to um, uh, obtain a job or whether they're trying to maintain employment in a certain position, and then in community living, um, somebody uh, just trying to remain independent as possible in their homes or in their communities um, and engage in the, the same activities as, as everybody has the advantage to, to take advantage of. Um, there are four state level activities among the activities that every state assistive technology program is responsible for providing and I'll, I'll go into um, a little bit of detail about each one of those before I, I turn it over to Tammy and Betty. Um, in the course of providing all of those different services and all those different settings, um, the AT programs collaborate a lot with, of course, with different state agencies from uh, state departments of education, Departments of Aging, um, Developmental Disabilities, and, and other state departments. And of course, that also um, extends to a lot of the, the state agribility program. And there are different kinds of partnerships um, is in terms of between the state programs and the state AT programs and the state agribility programs. Um, and they range from um, an example in Iowa where the state AT program and the state agribility program are one and the same. Um, other examples um, like in Kansas is a good example where um, they have a partnership with uh, Kansas State University, which is a land grant university in, in Kansas, and SKILL, which is a center for independent living. In Kansas, AT for Kansans, the AT program provides primary responsibility for providing services through the agribility program for farmers. Um, they collect all the data in terms of um, data, in terms of service data, um, and providing educational workshops for different kinds of rural service providers. Um, New Mexico is similar. Um, the New Mexico Technology Assistance Program is just kind of beginning their relationship as the contract partner with the uh, uh, New Mexico uh, State University Extension, which is the land grant university. And they'll be doing um, worksite, worksite assessments and provide statewide training on AT and different kind of adaptations to work. And then you have other states where um, there is maybe no formal contract or agreement between the agribility program or the state AT program but which uh, still are very close in terms of cross-referring. Um, Missouri, I think, is a good uh, example where um, there is a cross-referral in terms of the agribility program and the state A2 program working together. So let me go on and, and talk a little bit about um, the, the different kinds of uh, state-level assistive technology uh, activities that every um, state AT program, almost every state AT program is required to provide. First of all is uh, demonstration programs. And the demonstration programs provide a chance for an individual with a disability or um, a caregiver, a parent, a family member to come in and have um, assistive technology 
demonstrate it to them, whether it is some type of uh, CCTV or electronic enlarging devices for somebody with a vision impairment or a computer adaptation or um, whatever it might be. And it provides a chance for that person to actually try out different AT devices and look at the features, see how they work, and compare and contrast those demonstrations with other devices that are similar to see which one works best for them. And I think the, one of the values that, that I know that everybody experiences in terms of AT programs is actually the person finding the device does not work for them is, is almost as valuable as finding the one that does because if they can find out, if they think a device is something they want and that's the one they, they need and they find out that it's not, it can really um, help save them in terms of if they're purchasing the device themselves or if they give it through, get it through a funding source, it can really help them um, in terms of saving some, some dollars that, that maybe they didn't need to expend. And I think that, that too, a lot of people are reluctant sometimes um, if they haven't seen a certain device or maybe are really reluctant to, to try it out. If they have somebody that has experience with the device, that is trained, and can help them um, look at the different features, then it it's, takes a big step toward easing their reluctance to, to try a certain device. Um, assistive technology device loan programs. It gives um, people a chance to borrow devices for a limited time period. Uh, most commonly, um, probably from four to six weeks, um, each state is a little bit different in terms of how long you can borrow a device. Um, typically, there is no cost. There might be, a, a, in some cases, a very minimal cost. And um, it gives a chance to, for a person to actually try out a device in whatever environment they're going to be using it, whether it's their home or um, at school, work. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it also, it, in the same lines as the device demonstration programs, it really gives somebody a chance to, uh, to try out a device in that actual environment to avoid a, a, a bad purchasing decision. Another um, activity that, that people borrow devices for is if they have a device, um, say they have a, a communication device or some other device that is in, in uh, back to the vendor for repair, it, it provides an opportunity to, for the person to borrow that device to, uh, to use it while their, their device is in for repair. And then uh, there's assistive technology um, utilization programs. Um, and, you know, we just uh, passed uh, Earth Day, and it, it's certainly one aspect, I think, of the reutilization programs is that it keeps a lot of different types of assistive technology that aren't being used by anyone anymore to, from going to, uh, from, to a landfill or um, not being used anymore. And it can be transferred um, to uh, an original owner um, Devices can be re re uh, rehabilitated um, and uh, sanitized so that uh, that can be used for somebody that does need a device. And uh, this is another area where, especially, you know, one of the things I've heard a couple times now is that uh, individuals who are um, uh, in farming or ranching uh, industries sometimes um, don't have access to are either underinsured or uninsured. And in, in a lot of cases, um, a rehabilitation program, and typically um, all sorts of devices are, are rehabilitated through the re, uh, for the rehabilitation program. But it could be a wheelchairs, scooters, um, communication devices, just, just a long line of different devices that um, can be passed on when somebody's not using the device anymore um, to somebody who does need the device and who maybe can get it at possibly no cost or a very low cost. And then state financing programs. And state financing programs can be a couple of things. So one can be um, almost every state has a financial loan program where somebody can obtain a, a, loan, pro, a loan at uh, uh, preferable rates um, and terms somebody who maybe doesn't have perfect credit and maybe they have difficulty getting a, a loan from a bank or financial institu institution. Um, 
and through their uh, state financial loan program, assisted technology financial loan program, they can get an affordable loan at, at uh, flexible options, flexible terms. Um, the, uh, and this is a good example in, in Missouri. Um, there was uh, the agribility program referred uh, a rancher uh, and she was uh, from uh, Northwest Missouri and um, she had uh, experienced an accident and had contacted the agribility program in Missouri. Um, they found uh, an ATV that would help her get over the, the terrain in her ranch and um, was able to come to the Missouri Assistive Technology Program um, to apply for the, the Show Me Loans program there. And she was able to get an ATV and um, in terms that she could afford, monthly payments that she could afford. And then also she actually used the, the loan program uh, again after that for, for some other purposes. There are other programs too that um, provide AT um, to consumers at no cost using um, non-ATX sources. So the, uh, some AT programs administer other programs like last resort programs where um, they might be able to provide some, some grant funds from other sources um, for assistive technology that somebody needs, or um, other programs that maybe cut the price of, assist, of some type of assistive technology that somebody needs. So there's a, kind of a wide variety of uh, different kinds of uh, financing programs for assistive technology. So before I turn it over to Tammy and Betty, um, I do want to mention that uh, you can get anybody that's interested in a copy of the current ATX statute. Um, you can go to the AT3Center.net, and you can also go to the AT3Center to get a directory of state AT programs and to find out um, information about websites, about uh, program directors, email addresses, um, and also contacts for the email addresses for not only the, the program itself, the program director, but also for each one of the persons who um, is in charge of those various programs that I talked about, device loan, device demonstration, state financing, and device reuse. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to Tammy and Betty to talk a little bit about um, North Carolina and to go into more detail about how they um, collaborate in, in the, the North Carolina Agribility Program. Hello, um, thank you, Marty. And I'm Betty Rodriguez, a North Carolina Agribility a Partnership Project Manager. And Tammy Cogger is the director of the North Carolina Assistive Technology Program. And we are going to talk about um, our experience of working in partnership with North Carolina Assistive Technology Program. Betty, you might want to turn your camera on. It is on. Let me see. Oh, OK. Thank you, Paul. Can you see me now? We can see you now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so this is our um, information we want to share with you today. And before I start with um, the program, I want to show you, you know, the goals that we are sharing with the North Carolina Depart Department of Agriculture. We want to keep our farmers in farming and also to help the new beginning farmers to succeed in agriculture. We are gaining 100,000 people every year in North Carolina, and it's been reported that we are losing 2,700 farms every by the reporting five-year uh, census. So by working on our mission of the agribility mission, we are really helping, well, having information and being able to educate and assist those owners or the families that live in those 50, more than 50,000 farms in North Carolina. We also have about 150,000 farm workers and plus, you know, all the families and people who live in those farms. So really 
And we also helping, as I um, say at the beginning, the new beginning farmers and those in the military who are looking to transition into agriculture. I'm not sure how many we have, but I know here in North Carolina, we have a, a large number of um, veterans who want to transition into farming. Um, so as Paul mentioned earlier, we are sponsored by USDA, NIFA, the National Institute for Food and Agriculture. And we all partner with, well, the land-grant universities. And in this case, we ha we are in 1890, North Carolina A&T, and we receive the funds directly to us and share it with our partners and collaborators. So we partner here at the bottom, you see our partners. And we partner with North Carolina Agromedicine Institute, the Disability Partners, and North Carolina Assistive Technology Program, and do collaborative work with the NC State, A&T, and ECU. And also, well, let me move to the next. So these are the four core services that Agribility um, have to the to our um, uh, customers or clients is education, networking, awareness, and advocacy, and direct services. So our partners, you know, being able to work in partnership is like extending our hands to be able to reach the community, the North Carolina community, because uh, you know it's, it's very very important to have such a good quality of partners. And they are really helping us on creating awareness and advocacy for farmers with disabilities. They're also helping us to strengthen our networking capacity across the state. And on education, we do a lot of trainings to our a vocational rehabilitation folks, cooperative extension agents, and the direct services. So really when we have a, a new client, I do the initial contact and the farm assessment. So after that, I refer them to our um, North Carolina Assistive Technology Program, Agromedicine, or Disability Partners, sometimes to the three of them, most of the times to Assistive Technology Program. And they are um, really a great component on our partnership because they are under the same umbrella as vocational rehabilitation, and they have really helped us to strengthen our relationship with vocational rehabilitation. So when they do the AT assessment for our um, customers, then they send us a report and they send a report to vocational rehabilitation. We have been able to gain a lot with vocational rehabilitation due to our partnership. Now we have a person at vocational rehabilitation who's um, in charge of all the agribility clients. So whenever we call and we want to know about the status, that person is the one who knows. If the counselors don't have any or are, you know, need explanation on how to work on something, they can refer to that person and then she knows how to um, how to deal with different issues. And also, through the partnership with uh, NCATP, on top of being, you know, the advocates for our farmers, they also help us on getting other funding sources, like with um, Easter Seals in North Carolina. They have been, we have been able to provide some items to clients through that. Um, and as um, Mari mentioned earlier, the low-cost AT loans. And many other things we have been able to to do due to you know thanks to our partnership with um, NCATP. Um, so this is a summary of benefits of our partnership, the particular partnership with NCATP. 
um, well, they are the experts on assistive technology. They do the the assistive technology assessment on the farm. They do those demonstrations and trainings. And, you know, once once they install an equipment by VR, then they can come back again and um, make sure that they are using the equipment properly. And so they really help us to create and strengthen our network capacity in in North Carolina. And now, well, Tammy is going to explain you more about what they do. And thank you very much. So I'm turning it into Tammy. Thank you, Betty. Um, okay, yeah, I'm. Um, let me see if I have control of this. Did the new slide pop up? Good. Um, okay, yeah, I'm Tammy Coger, and I'm the director of the North Carolina Assistive Technology Program. And um, one of the things that Marty had mentioned earlier is that there are, I think, there's 56 statewide AT programs across the country, including Puerto Rico and Guam. And each of these programs are somewhat different because we have that flexibility at the state level to, to make the program what the state needs. Um, so there is flexibility at the state level for, some of, some of, for how the program is structured. Um, so here in North Carolina, of course, we are funded under the Assistive Technology Act that Marty had mentioned. Um, and also in North Carolina, we are one of the states that receives state appropriations as well. Um, and those are uh, the money that we see from the state are actually to help support the program, to help support some of the items for us to get more items in the demo and loan program, as well as to provide fee based services. So here in North Carolina, we also have um, a fee for service component for some of the activities that we provide. We do not charge fees for any of the activities that Marty had mentioned earlier and that I'll discuss a little bit more, such as the device demonstrations and device loans. Those are free for anybody in the state of North Carolina who would like to um, come in and receive a demonstration or to borrow a device. Um, we do charge fees for AT assessments, for consultations, and in North Carolina, we are also a Medicaid provider for communication assessments. Um, we are, as Betty mentioned, under the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, and um, we are one of the states that with the AT program is actually part of a state agency. And again, depending on which state you're in, um, will depend on where your AT program is located. Some of the AT programs are nonprofits. Some of them are housed within university systems, and some of them are housed in state systems, such as us here in North Carolina. Um, for the AgriBility program, Betty had mentioned, um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, that that's one of the benefits here in North Carolina to have the AT program under the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation um, because um, we've been able to serve as kind of the conduit between the Vocational Rehab Office and the AgriBility program and um, getting support for the, the farmers that need that and some of the equipment. Um, that is our very long, wonderful website. We used to have a very short website, um, and, uh, but as part of the state agency, we have a, uh, now been incorporated under the Department of Health and Human Services um, website, so that's a very long uh, address for us. But if you ever want to, to see who we are, just do a Google search for North Carolina Assistive Technology Program, and we're the first thing that pops up. Um, as Marty mentioned, um, as a state AT program, we have to serve all counties. In North Carolina, we have 100 counties, and we serve all counties. Um, for us, we are 100% self-contained, and what I mean by that is, is we do not contract out any of our services. Uh, the AT program provides all of the services, and, and so we have offices across the state. We actually have nine offices in the state of North Carolina. They range from all the way from Wilmington at their beach all the way to Silver, North Carolina, which is on the Tennessee border. Um, most of our offices are very small. We, we have about one, sometimes, one person. Sometimes we may have two people in those offices, but we do cover the whole state, and we have demo centers in each one of those locations as well. Um, we also serve all ages and all ability, uh, abilities. We serve individuals as young. We've had them as young as probably six months. Um, and we also serve individuals who have been well over 100. So we serve all ages, all function areas, all medical conditions, all disability-related concerns. 
um, family members, employers, case managers, counselors, anybody who wants um, or has a need to know about assistive technology services or products is welcome to come in for a demonstration or a loan or to receive information. So our partnership with AgriAbility, um, we've been in partnership with AgriAbility uh, approximately four to five years. Um, and um, one of the things that happened is North Carolina received an AgriAbility grant. NCANT received the initial grant and has continued to receive that. And um, it took a couple of years before the AgriAbility program realized that there was an assistive technology program and vice versa. It took a while for us to even know that anything about AgriAbility was going on in the state. So after about two to three years, um, we were approached from NC AgriAbility to form an official partnership in order to, to cover that assistive technology and that equipment component on the farm. So with that, we started providing um, assessments, assistive technology assessments, farm assessments, um, going out, not only looking at the farm, but many times when we're out there, we're also looking at the home, especially if somebody has uh, been newly injured or has uh, uh, you know, a new medical condition. Many times we're also looking at that, that home um, as well as that work environment to see what else could we recommend or what might be needed for that individual to be self-sufficient um, and safe in the home and his, in, in, in his or her farm. Um, we also provide training and technical assistance. Um, we do the um, hands-on demonstrations as Marty and, and Betty both mentioned. Um, this is actual hands-on of assistive technology, and um, I'll share a little bit about that later. We do um, AT uh, loans of equipment, short-term loans. In North Carolina, our loans are two weeks, but can be extended um, for longer than that if it's needed and if no one else is waiting on the device. So, so we can keep the devices out there. Um, typically, four to six weeks is usually the, the max that someone needs it as uh, we're working on getting that permanent solution. Um, we also provide information and referrals to other programs such as vocational rehabilitation, independent living, the independent living centers, other disability related organizations or medical organizations across the state. And then we provide a lot of awareness activities um, on assistive technology um, services and, and disability related services, as well as advocacy and funding resource information. Um, we, um, in North Carolina, we just recently, about a year and a half ago, we um, started an alternative finance program through the Self-Help Credit Union. And so it's, um, they've been providing loans for about 18 months now. And this is the, um, uh, Self-Help manages the program and we are a partner to them. This is where individuals who need assistive technology devices or medical equipment can go and apply for these loans. They have extended, um, extended terms and low interest. And um, I think to date they provide about nine loans. And I do know that a couple of those have been to, to our farmers. Um, so to go a little bit more in depth, um, what NCATP does with NC AgriAbility is we provide that one-on-one -on -one on site farm assessment and home assessment, like I mentioned. Um, we will generate a report after the assessment is completed. That report will be will go back to the AgriAbility manager, in this case, Betty. Um, if the individual has a vocational rehab counselor, then we will get a release and send that report to the vocational rehab office as well. Um, if they do not have a vocational rehabilitation counselor and we feel that they would benefit from that service and they are interested in that, then we will get a release and, and talk to the vocational rehabilitation program. We do provide the short-term device loans and the equipment. We make those referrals to other resources. Um, and uh, typically, like I said, we'll make that refer to vocational rehabilitation if the individual appears to be eligible for that program. And then we will work one-on-one -on -one with the vocational rehabilitation point person here in the state office or with the VR counselor, as well as the vocational engineer, and rehab engineer, to address those AT-related um, needs, to address the equipment needs, to look at what documentation is needed in order for vocational rehabilitation to look at pursuing the purchase of those items. Whatever they, the VR program needs, we will assist them in trying to get that in order to process um, that referral and to obtain the equipment as needed. Um, 
We also, um, Betty mentioned uh, that once the equipment is, it comes in, we'll do the follow-up for that. Um, if there's any training that's needed, we'll go out and train the individuals on the equipment. And then we provide the group training and workshops, uh, primarily on farming with assistive technology. Um, uh, again, our loan program is two weeks, but it can go longer. Um, demonstrations we provide to anyone. It's, um, you know, many times we're providing demonstrations to the family members as well as the individual. Um, and then some of the items that we have in our, in our offices across the state, of course, there's some low-tech items. We have the ergonomic grips, nillers, small wagons, small farm tools. And then we also have some higher tech items. Um, North Carolina, we tend to do a lot of communication assessments, and that's probably our largest area. And so we do have several communication boards, tablets, apps. And um, one of the benefits of the AgriAbility and AT partnership has been that we've been able to get a couple of larger tech items, uh, like a lift system that has um, uh, multi-components to it that can be tried in different ways. We, um, we were able to obtain, we see, obtain that and put it in our loan program, and then we're able to install that for trial basis before that recommendation is made and or before vocational rehabilitation uh, pursues the purchase of that if they are the ones to do that. And this was actually a partnership between vocational rehabilitation, assistive technology, and the AgriAbility program. Um, Again, uh, well, I think one of the benefits for the AT program and the AgriAbility program being, being partners is AgriAbility comes from that background of farming um, and knows those resources, where the assistive technology program is coming from that disability um, agency or, that, or from the disability and medical perspective. And so we are able to provide those uh, resources or provide that information that the farmers and the family members may need that may, um, may not be something that individuals who are typically working in the AgriAbility program or the Extension program may not know those as well. So that's been one of the, the biggest benefits, I think, is being able to, to link um, agencies with the AgriAbility program and to provide some of these activities um, and working with you know, assistive technology and, and disability partners across the state. Um, and then again, those are the community resources. Um, being involved in the medical and the disability related community, um, we've had access to community partners like the Centers for Independent Living. Um, one of them, of course, is a key partner on the AgriAbility grant. And then we have a couple of other um, IL centers across the state or independent living centers across the state that have provided peer and advocacy support. Um, and then, of course, that connection to vocational rehabilitation, Easter Seals, UCP, Betty mentioned, as well as the Self-Help Credit Union and some other uh, resources, um, Baptist Men's Ministry, um, the, some of the veterans programs that have also been able to purchase some items. Here in North Carolina, too, we have three separate agencies. Some of the states may have that, and some of um, your states may be one agency. It may be all combined. But here in North Carolina, we have three agencies, the Division of Vocational Rehab, the Division of Services for the Blind, and then the Division of Services for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And um, we just so happen are housed under the Vocational Rehabilitation, but all of those agencies are under the umbrella of Department of Health and Human Services. So we've been able to link um, AgriAbility and the farmers up to each one of those agencies as needed. So we have done some work with not only vocational rehabilitation, but of course services for the blind, um, services for deaf and hard of hearing, um, has the ability to, to fund um, hearing aids as well as telecommunication equipment, So and also provide interpreters. So we've worked with them quite a bit as well. And again, the self-help credit union. Um, that's kind of more about what we do from the assistive technology program side here in North Carolina, and I'm just going to throw it up to Betty to see if maybe I'm leaving anything out or if she would like to add anything else at this point. Hey, Tammy. Um, well, I think you have said pretty much everything. I was... Um, also, well, thinking maybe about some of the services that we do, and also um, we do a lot of meetings where 
you know, in NC, um, NCATP is very active on those meetings. We always try to improve our processes. Like, um, we work a lot on that and the advisory board um, meetings also. So it's really good. Our I think our program is not just set on a, on a way, but we are always trying to look for ways to improve and work together with our partners, with NCATP, Agromedicine, and disability partners, we're always trying to improve and giving a chance for our people from the collaborators because we also work with a lot of uh, collaborators. Like every time we have a new client, it's like opening the doors for new um, organizations to come in and start working and collaborating with them. So we are in a process of, in a very continuous process of growing and learning and improving. So it's really, I think this is all a process and it's very, very important to keep on, you know, good communication and try to, you know, move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, I'm sorry, Betty, uh, one more thing. One of the things that Betty had mentioned um, was with professional rehabilitation and of course NCATPs work directly with them. Um, like I said, we are actually housed under vocational rehabilitation, and one of the, um, the things that has had to happen over the last few years, and, and you may be facing this in your state, I don't know, is, um, you know, agribility in North Carolina was kind of seen as something new, even though we're a large farm, farming state. We have, um, in fact, it's our number one industry in North Carolina. Um, we had to do a lot of work with vocational rehabilitation and, and policy and, and getting the right people on board so um, we could start seeing some movement and some of the things that the um, VR program supported. And Betty had mentioned that um, now what happens is that VR has appointed one specific person here at the state office that all of the agribility referrals will, will stream through. And for us here in North Carolina, that seems to be working the best. We, we here, NCATP typically will do the assessment and we're typically making that referral to the VR program and now we are working with that one individual. Um, she, if she has questions, she'll address those up front and then she is building those referrals out to the appropriate VR staff across the state. Um, and if they have questions, they are coming back through that one individual. So for us here in North Carolina, that's just been something that has worked well, is having that streamlined process of um, the referrals through vocational rehabilitation. Um, also in North Carolina, VR also has the rehab engineering program, and so they have been central to what we do with assistive technology. Um, so many times, as you guys know who are in this field, um, you go out on the farm and, and you're looking at farm equipment, extremely old farm equipment. You're looking at something that they don't, they don't make a piece to go on there. Um, or if they do, is VR going to pay for an, you know, a very expensive piece that goes on a very old vehicle? Um, so we're addressing all of those issues. And the VR engineer or the rehab engineer has been great working with our AT staff and partnering and going out on joint assessments so we can look at at those um, larger pieces of equipment to see what might be able to be um, kind of fixed or ordered or mounted um, so we can make the, the adaptations that we need to make. The last slide, I went ahead and popped that up. That's the contact information for NC Agribility. Um, and unless Marty or Betty has anything else, Paul, we may be um, finished up here if if you want to take it from here, unless Paul, uh, I'm sorry, Marty or Betty has anything. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you, Tammy, Betty, and Marty. Appreciate all that information. Um, and interesting to see the different interfaces that uh, your program, your two programs uh, have in terms of agribility and the AT Act projects. Well, um, normally at this point I do the online polling, but we're having a little technical issue with our polling mechanism today. So what I'm going to plan to do is send out a, uh, a little um, web survey to those that have registered and uh, those that I have email addresses for. I did notice on the attendance list that 
uh, quite a few people were not on my original registration list. So if you would like to provide some feedback about the webinar, but you did not actually fill out the registration form, uh, if you could drop me a, a quick email just to let me know what your email address is, then I will, I'll be glad to send that poll out to you also. So at this point, um, what I'd like to do is entertain questions. And any of our uh, presenters are welcome to join in to answer questions. Another aspect of our technical glitches here was that any uh, questions you might have entered into chat may have disappeared. So I did not get uh, questions from that. If you would like to re-enter those again, um, I'd appreciate that. Also, if you would like to ask a question verbally, uh, you may feel free to raise your hand. And we will go uh, to try to activate your microphone or phone connection. Do you have a couple of questions here? I'm going to go up and go ahead and put on the screen. And again, any of our um, any of our uh, panelists can join in. I need to make myself the presenter real quickly to do that. Okay, we'll try that again. Okay, uh, again, any of our presenters, feel, please feel free to respond here to the question that's on the screen. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I can answer that. So the question is, of course, what kinds of organizations can become ATX programs? Um, the uh, the actually the, the AT programs are actually governor appointed in each state. Uh, there is a set amount of federal funds that each state receives every year, um, each state assisted technology program. Um, not a lot of funding um, in terms of the serving all populations, all types of disabilities, um, and, and being statewide. But, but again, yeah, each, each state is designated um, from the start um, by, the, by the governor of the state. Another question about what types of devices are eligible for reutilization? Um, Marty, do you want this is Tammy? Um, so the question is, are there types of devices that can't be reutilized through the ATF program? Um, here in North Carolina, unfortunately, our reuse program is, is relatively small. There's other programs that Marty, I know, can mention um, that the, the programs are much larger. Um, but here in North Carolina, we can take, um, for the most part, we can take any smaller items. We take man, a lot of communication boards, um, mounts. Uh, we do take DME items, durable medical equipment, such as wheelchairs. During the past storm that we just had, uh, we got rid of all of our wheelchairs that we had, and we were going on the hunt to find more, and we had other um, neighboring states that were helping with that. Um, but most of the time, we can take in anything that I think all the states are going to tell you as all, you know, good, um, gently used. We can't take things like mattresses and things that most of the states, uh, for the most part, prohibit in the exchange of anyway. And so mattresses, if it's uh, specialized seating, Sometimes we may not be taking that in. It's hard, um, you know, if it's a specialized CD and it's been molded, then we can't really use that. But we might be able to use the frame of the chair outside of the, the specialized mold. And we actually have the instance going hard here in North Carolina. Um, I can't think necessarily of any other thing, Marty, can you, that the AP Act programs really don't take. I know we don't take mattresses. Uh, we do take hospital beds, but no mattresses. No, I think that's a good uh, description, Tammy. There were uh, last year there were over I think the number is over 68,000 devices that were um, recycled and reused um, through the state AT programs, and I think it's something like uh, resulted in savings over somebody having to buy a new device of like 26 million dollars. So um, it, it is a wide range of, of different devices, just depending on the state.
Just talk a little bit about alternative financing. Yeah, the the uh, the question. Yeah, what types of interest rates do alternative financing programs charge, and what amounts do they normally lend? So it really varies from state to state in terms of of interest rates. Um, different programs are run different ways. Some are direct loan programs where the the AT program is actually um, managing all the the loan activities. And then there are also loan guarantee programs and uh, uh, also uh, programs that, that reduce interest. So it ranges from, I know in, there are some for some smaller loans, there are some no interest program loans. Um, I know in Missouri, it ranged from two to 4%, some are higher, some up get up to uh, 8%. It just really depends on the program. So you really would wanna look in your own state. In terms of amounts, again, that varies from state to state. Um, the, the, uh, the items that are um, uh, the people take out loans for most often are um, vehicle adaptations and, and hearing aids, just because um, there are very few um, uh, other alternative financing sources available. So it just varies from state to state. I mean, um, it can range up to you know some programs. I think I've seen as slow as. Uh, Ten or twenty thousand dollars, and others can go all the way up to what it would cost to purchase a new vehicle, an, an adapted vehicle. Okay, thank you for those responses. I do see one entry in the chat. One question was a uh, comment. Uh, Tammy and Betty, thank you for the presentation. How did you find each other? Um, this is Tammy. Um, actually, um, Betty joined as kind of, we had a, a previous agribility coordinator um, before Betty joined us, and, and we love Betty. Uh, but before Betty joined us, there was another agribility coordinator and the, um, the partner at East Carolina University. The two of them um, were working together and um, I believe I actually did a presentation at East Carolina University, which is where the Agromedicine Institute is housed. And during that presentation, um, the, uh, the partner down there came up to me and said, we need to set up a meeting. And so the three of us uh, met that way and just kind of, you know, by circumstance that I was doing a presentation where, where they were at and we met. Um, and then we were able to start talking about what the two programs did, and it was initially from the very first meeting, we both we all knew that this was something that we needed to look at partnering together because of the need and what we did and what our resources were and what they um, the agribility program did. Okay, it's interesting how these relationships form because agribility requires partnerships, and uh, there are all kinds of different partnerships that evolve. So. Everybody has a different story on that, I think. Another comment uh, and question. In Illinois, we have a good working relationship between IATP and AgriBility Unlimited, but find it difficult to work effectively with state voc rehab for dual AgriBility slash voc rehab clients. It's probably a matter of training to voc rehab staff, but what do you suggest? in terms of serving agribility clients who are eligible or might be eligible for vocational rehabilitation? This is Tammy. Um, I'll answer and then Betty may want to jump in here. Uh, what we found in North Carolina, I think you're right that uh, training is, is key, but you're also, what we had to do is we had to find the right person in the right place, which you know, I think is, is what we can say about a lot of these partnerships. But um, we started with vocational rehab when we, there was a little bit of pushback. And so what we initially did was, um, well, let me back up. When I met the individual from agromedicine and the um, agribility coordinator, one of the first things they did is they encouraged me to go to the national training workshop with agribility. And um, so we had a meeting and then I went to the NTW workshop 
and um, that kind of opened my eyes to to what we were looking at regarding farming and how assistive technology could really fit into that that mix. So um, we came back and we started getting some pushback from vocational rehabilitation as far as they just didn't see how this was all going to fit. And one of the first things we did is we did a webinar for vocational rehab and got permission to put that on. It was called the, it's called the Learning Management System. It's statewide. That webinar talks about farming in North Carolina. It talks about medical conditions, the average age of the farmer, and just really stress the need in North Carolina on um, why the why we needed vocational rehabilitation and why so many of the farmers um, would be fitting into the eligibility for vocational rehab. Um, so, and then we put that up on the LMS system, their management system, learning system, and um, then several VR counselors started watching it. So then we started getting phone calls. And um, we still didn't have that connection where um, VR was fully understanding um, what the program was, as well as you know, a lot of the farmers have a lot of land and a lot of equipment. And so here in North Carolina, they, they weren't necessarily meeting the needs, financial needs test, because having um, all these other resources. So at that point, it took us meeting with people in policy, with vocational rehab policy. So I, I say that because I encourage you to look for that person. Um, find that person that, that helps make those policies for that VR agency in, in your state. Um, and see if you can set up meetings with them and, and really tell them what the program is. And that's what it took here in North Carolina is us working with the head of policy and our rehab engineer to show them what the project is, what it does about the farmers to make that, that pitch that, you know, if the farmers get rid of all their land and they get rid of all their equipment and they're not farming anymore. So we had to really make that pitch. Um, and then the last thing we did is we actually, NCHC actually sponsored the um, we have engineer to attend the national training workshop that year and um, that made again made a big impact on him because he was able to see some of the equipment we were talking about and actually talk one on one with farmers and other partners across the state. So that's kind of how we've done it here in, in North Carolina. Thank you Tammy. Uh, just a couple comments from Indiana. I know that uh, We've done a, quite a few visits uh, just to VR offices, uh, sometimes doing in-service training for VR counselors at the offices. Uh, some of the other states actually conduct like little uh, assistive technology demonstration fairs and invite vocational rehabilitation counselors to come to those where they can you know, drive some of the equipment or try out some of the lifts, um, you know, use some of the the heavy-duty wheelchairs and that type of thing. So there are quite a few options, and um, you know we'd be glad to share more about that and point you to some other state projects too that have some some ideas. We are at the end of our hour. Uh, we're quickly, if you'd like to enter another question, I'll double check. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, I'll make another pass through the attendance and just see if anybody's got their hand up. Right now, I don't see anybody, and I don't see more comments in the chat box. So again, thank you, um, Marty, Tammy, and Betty for an excellent presentation today. Uh, thank you to everyone who's attended. Again, we will plan to send out uh, a quick poll for you to give us some feedback on today's webinar for those that have provided email addresses one way or the other. Future webinars, we're looking at uh, one probably in June that talks about advocacy for people with disabilities, and that will be provided by staff from the April organization, the Association of Programs for Rural Independent Living, uh, that, that uh, is an association group for independent living centers around the country. So if you registered for this one, uh, you will uh, be invited to that. Again, if you happen to get the information from somebody else and did not actually register and you want to be on the mailing list for future webinars, I would need to get your email address. So please just drop me a line. So again, thank you for your participation today and we wish you a good day. <laughs>